Can you get off my jeans? Got a nice birthday card off the pigeons. Any had a chance to read that? Hey, Brooks. He's got nothing to the sheep. Chester! Luckily, no sheep were harmed, and he did come straight back just after the video stopped. But he also got a clout on the nose and put in his box because he wasn't shouldn't do that. So we're trying to teach him. I've put the spreader in the workshop because the bush for the bottom's thirty quid, and the one for the top seven pound. But if it's damaged the top, it's ninety quid. So we're just going to have a look to see if it's still okay, and then we can just get away with the two smaller bits. Yeah, just want to see if that cat's bush is damaged or not. So we'll just take these two seventeens out and add twenty-two and lift it down got this bush off now and I don't think it's damaged too badly the casting but considering they're going to post it up to me I think I'm better ordering the whole thing I know I could save some money by not getting a cast bit here but if it turns up and the bush is slacking there and it's going to damage itself again and then it's going to stop working with a full tank of fertilizer I think for what it's worth and the expense of the fertilizer I should just treat it to a whole new part which is this Complete with the rubber bush. They'll probably repair it with tiger seal, but there's no point in bodging it up when you, you're using expensive stuff through it. But that was bolted on under there, and it come out pretty easy because I've been stainless steel. Yeah, I've ordered everything just to make sure it's right, and the whole thing posted and everything from Somerset to to here tomorrow, 140 quid, including the vat. I can clean the vat back. But this spreader, I don't even think I've spent 100 quid on it in six years because all I've done is replace that bottom bearing and then like a spring on here or something. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I I thought it was a roll pin, but it doesn't. Can't, you can't look a roll pin out, can you? Must be a ballon key. What's that? Yeah, that bolt, it used, sorry, it used to be a bolt with a lock nut on and it's corroded off. So I've spread it with WD-40, turn it upside down so WD-40 runs in. Then I'll drill it and try easy out it. If that doesn't work, I'll have to take the PTO clutch apart, pull it off the shaft, then drill it in the vise and then put it all back together. So I'll just leave it to soak a minute and see what the lads are getting up to. Mum and Dad have got me a great weather vane to go up on the shed. And then also Christine has sorted that out it's an owl obviously made out of a log that we that didn't go through the chipper isn't it great tried drilling it a bit but i've not all the drill bits are kind of broken and blunt so we're going to go get some new drill bits see if we can drill it if not we're going to take the rest of them springs out and then bolts in the clutch pull it off with the bearing puller or the slide hammer and then get it in the vise and drill it out and re-tap it and put a new bolt in but there's no panic because we've not got the bush for inside here yet anyway, so just on with that now. It's drilling easy now with the right bits. It looked like it was going the wrong way on the camera though. Just been on a Zoom call with NFU Education because they're looking at doing more of the sort of science technology through learning is stem into schools going up to secondary schools so that they can do projects based on real life agricultural farming problems so we were talking about different things and i come up with maybe sort of the, the reverse engineer of some of the things that we use so you've got like the real life example of it which what it could be now but the reason that it's built in that way and what problems it's solved over the years because it's all very well saying like think of a tractor for the future and and what it would do but there's obviously universities and loads of people working at that. But if they don't know what a tractor is to start with, it's hard for them to then develop it further to be a real life use. Whereas if they see one and they understand how it works, that's one thing. And then if they understand how it got to that point and what problems it solved along the way, I think they might learn a bit more. Anyway, that was what, one of the ideas I threw up. So we'll see. I think the university are going to come and visit anyway because they teach teachers, I think. So interesting Zoom call. Only one person stay on the birthday bumper. That's me. No, I'm only messing this loads, but I'm gonna have to write them all on because it'll take me ages. Looks like Chess has been planning a great escape, digging out of his pen.
quick update on Project Barn Rebuild. It's nearly done now and it's also it's got the door handle on. Mix is getting clean at the moment. It's not had a door handle for ages. Anyway, it's got the door handle on it now. So looks good. Today's birthday bumper is massive. You may have to pause it so that you can see everyone's name on there. So happy birthday to everyone that shares their birthday with me. I'm just here now measuring the length of the sprayer because we're looking at putting a new building behind where we took the bund out where the Weybridge office is. And we're gonna see, make it into a chemical store and maybe we can fit the sprayer in it as well. So I'm just gonna measure the length of the sprayer and the height of it to see whether it's possible to fit it in that space. This kind of fell by the wayside being fixed because I couldn't find my easy outs. Then we ended up going up to the yard, looking at the brickwork up there and I had my Zoom meeting that I'd forgotten about. Anyway, on the Zoom meeting, we were talking about the technology and problems to do with technology in agriculture and the challenge that children could solve in science and education for learning. Anyway, one of the things I was talking about, I was explaining how a fertilizer spreader works and how different manufacturers have used four different methods to control the spread pattern, specifically on headlands. So this one is a Rico Sulky, or made by Sulky, marketed by Rico. And this controls its headland pattern. So when, you, when we say headland, that's when we go around the outside of the field. Well, we don't want to throw any fertilizer into a water course. So we want it to spread 36 meters wide all the time. So there's two discs, one spreading 18 meters to the left, one spreading 18 meters to the right. But when you go around the headland, you want to say, well, no, only spread 16 meters so we keep it away from water courses. So this does it in a way that, with this what they call a tri-board. So that is a spout in there, if you can see. It's got a little rubber flap there. And, where, there we go. and it's where it drops the product on the disc. And that is how it controls how far it throws it. So on the headland, it will drop it somewhere different on the disc, which is spinning. And then that means that it won't throw it as far because these are obviously flying around at a certain rate of knots. And these are also adjustable. Now, another manufacturer for the headland spins the disc in the opposite direction. That way then it won't spread as far and they put a bevel on the back of the disc. A different manufacturer again, decides that the easiest way is to slow the disc down. So this, the outside disc won't go as fast. But to do that, if you imagine you've got a drive train like this, which is really simple, you've just got a shaft coming out the back of the tractor into a gearbox, split to two discs. To change the speed of one disc, you've either got to have some sort of differential in the middle or spin the disc hydraulically. So another manufacturer that makes green ones and sounds the same as an online retailer, they use hydraulically driven discs and they slow one down. Then there's another manufacturer that has what it calls a headland kit and it's a, it's a flap with fins in that folds down into the spread pattern and deflects the material in a slightly different direction. So I think that's all the four different methods I can think of. You've got the, where you drop it on the disc, the speed of the disc, the deflector, and spinning the disc the opposite way or changing the veins. So there's maybe four or five different scenarios there, but this can do it all as it's going along. And it means that you don't, you have a, a non-expensive drivetrain and you don't have any fancy electrics or hydraulics underneath where the fertilizer comes down. Because fertilizer, as you can see, is corrosive. So the bottom is all stainless steel. This is getting on for seven or eight years old, we think now. So it's just starting to show, you know, little bits of, of rust on it. It puts 100,000 pounds worth of fertilizer probably through it this year. So you do want it to be spread accurately. And that is why there's so much technology in them. This has been a brilliant spreader. I mean, I'm just looking now. There's only a tiny bit of wear on them discs and veins considering it's done I mean that one's nothing at all considering it's done seven or eight seasons nearly so I'm really pleased with it if we swap it it'd definitely be another one I think Lemkin now make them but they're just made by Sulky but painted blue with Lemkin colours but you do get like a fancy plough furrow in the headlight but yeah I thought I'd just explain that there's just the technology on them in fact you can see nearly better on this one here so that's the flap there here so let me flip the camera so the fertilizer drops down this chute here and then depending on where this ram is, this twists and it controls whereabouts it drops it on the disc. You wanna also 
you don't want a too high a disc speed, otherwise you get the fertilizer shattering. But that's that's how it controls its depth. And then this ram here controls how much the fertilizer flows out. And then the other ram, like I say, it's got what they call a tri board on. So it controls where it drops on the disc and then control it even further with that thing so that it doesn't spread wide for the headland. So when you go around the headland on this machine, you always go around it anti-clockwise because that's the side with the tri board kit on. But yeah, it's it's technology in farming is all around you, but you just don't realise it. But we take it for granted because it's it's been there for that long and just evolved over time. Better just say as well, it holds four ton as long as you've got enough weight on the front of the tractor. Because if you watch Saturday's video, you'll see I didn't. And someone said, well, why did you put too much weight in? Well, basically, we were trying to get that field done with two hopperful. And it meant they'd have to run backwards and forwards across another field to do it. So we just tried to push all up. But we didn't have enough ballast on the front for the wet holes. I want to say that's all for today. But there's a few little bits of clips and pictures I just want to put in that people have sent to me. Because obviously, it's been my birthday. I did I mention it was my birthday? <laughs> so I'll just put them at the end of this video. But thanks for watching. And I'll see you all tomorrow. And maybe you've all learned something today as well. Happy birthday, Ollie. Look what we've done on our bumper. Happy birthday, Ollie. Happy birthday, Ollie. Thank you everyone for all the birthday messages on all the different platforms that this has all been sent on. It's brilliant and I'll see you all tomorrow. So thank you.